Okay, so this is TK Shazam. I'm just a nerd who likes Tekken. And, you know, the usual. I'm here to try and introduce a concept that I'm seeing get asked about a lot and hopefully give you guys an understanding of what's it like in Tekken? What's it like for Paul? The concept for today is Okizeme, right? The idea is that you are that's fine not set you knock the opponent on the ground now what do you do right the oki comes from a point of you are up in a standing position the opponent is not and you have the advantage whether it's due to the end of a combo or you got to knock down punish somewhere right the idea is pretty simple you're going to run up and attack them right but why you know it's obviously you want to press the advantage so i should really say how right uh i don't know how familiar people are going to be with the oki options and the whole grounded status. So I'm going to try and give a brief overview of what are the various positions you have to be aware of from the opponent, what are the options from them, and then afterwards, once that is established, okay, what does Paul do against these options, right? For right now, let's go down face up, front. It's obscured by the frame data, but you get the gist. Paul is face up on the ground. He's looking at the other Paul, wondering where it all went wrong and why his hair is the way it is, right? And why does he have a piece of toast on his head? Face up, feet towards. You'll hear a lot of face up, face down, feet away, feet towards. These are references to the various positions an opponent can be on the ground. For right now, Paul is clearly face up, he, his face is facing the sky, and his feet are towards the opponent. This is the most common position you'll find a lot of opponents in, right? It's how they're left at the end of combos, it's how a lot of knockdowns leave them as, right? It's the most common and also, I don't know about best, but, I mean, it's probably the best is the most maybe ideal for the defender, right? You have a plethora of options. You have get up kicks. You have spring kicks, if I can input them. There you go, right? You can back roll, you can forward roll, you can side roll. You can, if you were to get knocked down, you can quickly get do a ukemi, right? Which we'll talk about in a moment. The opponent has the most variety of options here, but at the same time, they're still on the ground, right? And yes, they have a lot of options, but you can you know, figure out which options they like to use the most and adjust your offense accordingly. Right. Let's go... Face up, feet away. This, oh man, if you guys ever played Paul and Tekken 7 Season 1, Chef's Kiss, bring that back. This is the worst position for a defender to be in. If you press forward to get up roll, you do like this weird awkward get up, and during this during this animation, you are not invincible, right? Like you will you will get hit out of stuff. If you get up too quickly like this, you'll get hit. Uh, your getup kicks are slightly faster. If you noticed earlier when I was doing like the mid and low, the both were like 22 frames, but here it's 18 frames. It's still not ideal. The You're just in a really awkward position here, right? You don't have spring kicks available to you. You have the side rolls. I'm sure you can still ukemi, but it's just a very awkward position to be in, right? 
face down, feet towards, right? So we're going to go face down with the normal. Not as common of a position. Usually it involves the opponent flipping you over somehow or something. And Paul, Paul gets it pretty easily because he has back one too, which is really nice. And then he has whoop, this move, which is amazing. Right? I don't even know what it's called. I just call it wall running too. Right? Uh, it's still not great. It's not as it's not as bad as face up feet away. Right? But it's still not ideal. But you still have options. You know, get up kicks are a lot slower, but that's fine. Actually, is that fine? These things are a lot slower. Yeah, so you see why it's not ideal, right? You don't even have the faster get up kicks of the other thing. But you can, you know, get up quickly, get up back quickly. You can do the front roll, side roll, side roll, stay on the ground, etc., etc., etc. And the last one is going to be face down, but your feet are away. This is not the worst. It's not the best, though. This one's a bit weird. Uh, if you get up too quickly, you can put yourself at risk of getting hit back turned as you're getting up by certain things. For Paul, uh, old, old school. Oh my god, Tekken 7 probably is old school now. Oh my god, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> But Tekken 7 is probably like a, you know, Tekken 7 player, uh, Tekken 7 Paul players might be very familiar with the old back 2-1 ender in certain situations. But yeah, basically, it's still, like, you still get the fast getup kicks, which is nice, 19 frames, but you're not in the best position, you know, still have all your options. Really, if, if I had to make a generalization, it's really just about knowing when the opponent is face up, feet towards you, because you have to be aware of a lot more of attacks from that position. I think, can Paul do it? Like, if you're facing Fang, he can do this special get up. No. Down for you. Oh, I almost forgot about toe kicks. Oh yeah, no, that's another thing, right? So if you're face up, if you're face up feet, if you're in this common position, you can also do this really quick toe kick, right? This thing is really quick, immediately gets you out of there. Look at how much distance I get from that, if it hits the opponent. If the opponent blocks it, you are launch punishable, but such is the risk you take, right? But yeah, really interesting. I never, I always almost forgot about that. The various roles we'll talk about in a second, but the main idea I want you to walk away from with this is be aware of these kicks. This is probably the most common response you're going to see a lot, especially in early ranks, right? Especially like spring kick, right? Getting, getting used to spring kick, becoming very comfortable at punishing it at the specific ranges can really help level up your, your Okizeme, right? Mm, the ground roll and the backwards roll. So ground roll is just them moving slightly. As an attacker, you just kind of want to follow them their direction. It's not. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, the one you have to worry about is the okemi. So what? What? What do I keep? Why do I keep sounding like a weeb? What exactly am I talking about? Right. Ground technique. Ukemi is just a quick tech, also known as tech roll, right? The opponent can do in a lot of situations. Notice how quickly he got up. All right. If I don't capitalize on my combo, that's what happens. You'll see Paul with the 33 frame advantage whenever, whenever he launches an opponent, right? But you see that 23 in the in the parentheses in the brackets. No, that's parentheses. Uh, that means I have 23 frames before the opponent can do a tech roll or, you know, any quick get up option. So realistically, that's how much time you have, right? 
yeah, technically I have a 33 frame head start, but if I wanted to capitalize on my momentum here in this launcher, I have 23 frames. But the idea is that this option is almost like a, a pseudo get out of jail free card. The opponent will typically be left far away from you. It will be like a, oh wow, you, you um, immediately escape, put yourself off access, yada, 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 right? You control the direction you do this with, with the button press. I think it, one is left and then two is right. But pretty useful. Keep in mind, some characters can take advantage of this with a tech roll catch. If there is one for Paul, I apologize. I'm not aware of it. I'm not, I'm not a lab monster, right? I'm just here to try and enlighten on some basic concepts and then maybe maybe a maybe a future lab monster is looking at this and sees something i don't i i wish you you know godspeed man oh man there's there, <laughs> the more i try to do these these concept breakdown videos the more i'm going like man there's a lot of shit in this game how, how on earth did i ever learn it but those are the various wake up options the last thing you want to talk, I would want to talk about is a spike versus a normal hit. What does that mean? So, if you like Paul, you like this move, his back one to Punisher. It leaves the opponent in a face down, feet away position. Again, as we saw earlier, a pretty advantageous position for the attacker. The opponent cannot spring kick. The opponent can do some awkward get up rolls, but they're not. They're not like really powerful get out of jail free cards right paul also gets this option from his running too man they really made running stuff a lot easier in this game right. now what is the difference the difference is running two spikes the opponent locking them out of certain defensive options back one two does not even though the knockdown state is still favorable for the attacker right you probably saw it in action before I reset it, but let's just set them to do a uh, tech roll. Oops. Yep, they can still tech roll. They do not tech roll here, right? They are stuck on the ground. You're neutral, so you don't have a huge head start, but that's fine because, you know, you just have your faster options. Let's do the other tech roll. Why not? Yep. So interestingly enough, quick recovery they cannot do. That kip up, right? That kip up you saw there, they cannot do it from this position, right? So neat so far. And let's do the back quick roll. Yeah, see, they can't do it. So outside of the normal position, right? The face up feet towards you, anytime you can get something outside of that, the defender's options are more limited. They still have a lot, but the more options you can take away from your opponent, the more avenues to offense you have, right? Because now stuff is working that normally wouldn't before. If I just did this knockdown, I have to run up and the opponent's already recovered by the time I'm there. But if there's someone that likes to back roll a lot, I do this knockdown instead and they're still not getting up and now I can start applying offense, however, however that looks. So that should be a general overview. I'm sure there's some miscellaneous tech or some sort of like a uh, uh, you know niche application. I I missed my apologies in advance, but hopefully this gave you like a brief overview and you should be more familiar with these options, right? Now, what does Paul want? Paul is really about. Any knockdown, really. He, he gets a lot of knockdowns in a lot of positions, right? With punishing, block punishing, you got back one, two, down one, plus two, combos, demo man. Basically, you're capitalizing on the opponent in this knockdown state and then running up to them. And from here, right, the mo as you run up to them, you quickly put them in a 50-50. As the opponent gets up, imagine, imagine a Paul... Right, so let's say a Paul running up at you, and then boom, you just do the 50-50 on him. Obviously, the dummy set to auto-block everything, so I just died there, in theory, in a real match. Rip me. Right. 
But obviously, if you're a defender and you see <laughs> you see this behemoth, the, the powder toast fairy man running at you, it can be kind of scary because now you have to guess. Or he can just not do any of that. He can just do this, and now you're in a bad position because, you know, on block or hit forward one plus two leaves Paul in a very good position. But the reality of it is, in the open ground, he's just not getting a lot, right? You you land in the open ground. Typically, a lot of his combos will end with demo man. The demo man pushes them super far away, right? Now he has this, right? He has this ender. But, you know, now I'm sacrificing wall carry for this. In the grand scheme of things, for one point of difference, is it really that big of a deal? Eh, you be the judge there, right? Because I'm of the opinion you get you want to get wall carry where you can get it. Paul at the wall is beyond your wildest imaginations of a monster of a character, even if he seems kind of underwhelming in the open ground. But you, you, you know... Obviously, like any character, knockdowns are great. Knockdowns where you run up to them and then apply 50-50, sweet. And who's got a pretty relatively scary 50-50 when the opponent is, you know, if the opponent's getting up in this position, they can't, they can't side roll, they can't tackle, roll, whatever else, and Paul's just running up to them in the 50-50, you know, his is pretty scary, right? But the reality is you're not always going to get that, right? The opponent's going to be running away, running or using ground rolls, tech rolls, etc., etc., right? So if we set them to get me, they're usually mashing the tech option and you got to you gotta run up and be ready for them to already be standing up and ready to attack you, right? Additionally, right, as the defender... This is both like something you should be aware of and something you need to be realize about your opponents, right? The restart setting. Let's put them face up. Okay. If I'm I'm not going to do this, but if I sat here from now till the end of the video or the end of time, right? That Paul on the ground is going to stay on the ground for as long as he wants. Nothing that the opponent does can really influence him to get up, right? he chooses when he wants to get up that's i my understanding right is very different from other other games right like let's say 2d fighters like street fighter there is a canned wake up timing for a lot there's not really any variable wake up timing you can really do you got a set wake up timing you wake up and you guess right is it going to be a throw a strike or a parry for tekken there is no canned wake up timing right the opponent can stay on the ground for as long as they want. So, what do you do against that? You just go, okay, well, I'll just find a move that, that hits the ground in, right? So you start doing your moves, and you go, oh, oh, nothing's working. Right. You know, long-winded way of saying, you're going to go through your move list, you're going to find what options hit grounded, and then you're going to use that in situations. Like, let's say... Not set, not set, restart settings. Okay, I do a basic combo. Okay, the opponent's staying on the ground. And instead of getting up into like any of my scary 50-50s, they're just like, I'm, I'm staying on the ground. So what do you do? You go take a look at what moves you have that hit grounded. Simple, right? To save you some hassle, Back four, consistent, will always hit the opponent grounded. Course before three. Grounded down two. Grounded down two meaning you are close to the opponent, they're on the ground. You press down plus two. And then Paul does this slam. How much damage does this do actually? 18 damage or 16. That's so interesting. Huh. Yeah, this is the most damaging option. And of course, down back two. Love this move, right? Steel pedal, it's pretty good. Hits grounded, hits grounded. Now, there are some moves that you might think hit grounded because you saw them hit the opponent while they were on the ground before. However, that is not the case. There are moves, 
I, I, sorry, there also might be some more consistent options, but these are pretty straightforward. They'll get the job done, right? You got your close range low. You got your long range low. Oh, that also hits granite? What? That's crazy. <laughs> I learned something new every day. I honestly never use this. I should. But it does so little damage these days. I don't know. Anyway. You got your long range low option. You got your close mid option. You got your other close mid option. However, there are some... There are some moves that seem like they hit grounded and some moves where just due to the situation, it gets weird, right? Uh, let's go. For example. Oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, I don't read. That's funny. You're in this position. This position might look familiar because it's the same position you get in Corsa before three counter hits, right? Okay, my opponent's on the ground. Let's, I want some damage. Let's get a nice chunky mid in there. Rararagi. Oops, I mean that worked. So, obviously there are some issues here. When, in this situation, for whatever reason, I think it's because, I, I, I don't even know why it is like this. Because, look, if the opponent's head is directly towards you, it doesn't matter if they're looking at you, admiring Paul's very well-shaped arms, I guess, or if they're face down on the ground contemplating their life decisions, right? If their head is towards you for whatever reason, he's admiring the Jordans. Oh, god dang it. Let's do front. Oh my god, wait, that works? Oh my god. Why is it only that position? I don't understand. Well, we all learned something today. Uh, I should have done this. I should have verified this in the in the um, before I even hit record. But you know what? We committed. But you get the idea, right? Now, what do I mean by situational? Okay, so this one, this one. I promise, I did check. To make this very simple for myself, uh, we're gonna put ourselves in the wall. So when the opponent hits, gets hit, they can do various ground techniques, right? I will choose for them to do a side roll. My standing three is not currently hitting them. Same with down one. But if I hit them and they start doing a side roll like that, I wanna hit them again, right? So I'll hit them and then boom. You saw that, right? Hit them, boom. Hit them, boom. The opponent doing a side roll lifts their body up from that pure grounded status for whatever reason, and they can get hit by more moves. It can't be hit by everything, right? You see me whiff the back one. Does this work? Yeah, down one plus two is still missing. So you still have situational moves, right, that will hit the opponent, but they do come up. Once you've established what your consistent ground hitting options are, consider what are your more situational options. Moves that are fast and good at locking down the opponent and punishing them for staying on the ground or trying to side roll, right? Boop. Free damage, it disrupts their timing, and if they did like a, whoop, let's do, let's have them do a wake up low kick. Oop. See? And I'm counter hitting them, so now down one is making them force crouch, right? Boop. Boop. <sighs> but yeah, so be aware of your options. Another weird one is core circle back one. So if I'm here, any other any other character, if they're standing, would get hit by this, right? Quarter circle back one does not hit grounded, right? It looks like it does, so if I'm really close to him, it'll hit for some reason. When I refer to something as, and honestly everyone should, uh, if I refer to something as hitting grounded, it means consistently. There is, there's no fuss, right? There's no fuss. There's no like, oh, but if you're, if the stars align and the planets come connect with one another, you'll hit them, right? This is not consistent, right? 
and in the heat of the match, you can't, you don't want to waste time and energy making sure you're in the perfect position to land this, right? With down back two, I know for a fact, I just know, right? If they're face up and their head is towards me, down back two is not gonna work, use something else. But then in 99% of other scenarios, right? Down back two will work just fine. So, that's you you want you if I say something hits grounded if you say something hits grounded I recommend just keep it to the consistent options with the least amount of you know little extra caveats that you got to worry about once you've established what your consistent ground hitting options are then move on to the situational ones it's they're good to know and honestly you just they're just usually usually it's just moves you like a lot right like with Paul down one's always been a staple so it makes sense that, oh, this thing is just gonna hit if they move their body off the ground, right? If they do a roll, right? The reason the down one plus two is hitting where it wasn't before is because the opponent is set to do a get up kick and that increases their body, right? So if we shift it back to do side rolls, oh, huh, man, maybe I am just a fraud. Let's do, what was it, side roll left. Yeah, okay. I'm still a fraud, but slightly less. All right. I hope, I'm, God, I really hope this is, this is, you know, turning on some light bulbs in your heads, because if it's not, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm and to be fair, it might not, because all I'm doing is just gushing a lot of information towards you and, you know, hoping something sticks, but... You know, that is the general idea. In the open ground, I'm going to try and hit my opponent with... Let's say I'm super far away, I'm running up, they're staying on the ground. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. If I'm super far away and I'm afraid like I won't get there in time... Easy damage, right? Certain moves, as we're seeing... Probably should have talked about this earlier, but whatever. They do like a little, oh, that's interesting. Why are they, 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 they change the position of the opponent. This can be very advantageous as the attacker, right? Because, oh, look, they stayed on the ground and now they have all these get up options. And they're messing up with my timing. Boom. You flip them over, completely changing up the offensive options they have. And as we saw before, anything that leaves them like that, you know, pretty slow on the get up kicks. And then you can start doing a bunch of other stuff. Course to go forward three will also do this. See the flip over. It's even honestly even better than back four because back four puts them feet towards you, but now course of forward three puts them feet away, which again further messes up their options. And it's the same. So if they and it's whatever the opposite is, right? So if they were face down, now they're face up. Oh, that's really good actually. <laughs> Look at that, look at that messed up Oki position. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> now the opponent has a good one. That's it. I gotta remember that. Anyway. Just be aware of a lot of these situations, right? Like your whiff, it doesn't have to be a combo. Like let's say you whiff punish somebody at the wall, you're dancing around, dancing around. Boom, back one, two. Oki time, right? Now, where does Paul really get scary, right? Now, it's the fun part. Boop. Opponent's getting up, getting up. Keep hitting them, keep hitting them. Oh, does this hit ground consistently? Yes. But this move is slow, so I... I don't know. Sometimes you'll get there. It is nice to have oh. Anytime the opponent is at the wall it and they're on the ground, it's 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 not looking too hot for your boy, right? Let's do Why is Paul so scary? Okay. We talked about tech rolls, we talked about how pretty neat they are, right? The opponent has immediately escaped the wall and it's not looking too great for you because now you have to reposition and reset the wall pressure, right? So what happens if we do Demo Man and then the opponent, right? Boop, boop, boop. 
Or let's do here. Demo man. Dash up. Their tech roll leaves them perfectly in place, right? This is gonna this is gonna bother me, so let's just not let's just not deal with that, right? Demo man, boop. Oh, they tech rolled, dash up, demo man, oop, they tech rolled. Death fist, right? If you have an idea of when they're gonna tech roll. Now I've I've preempted the sidestep, right? Their back is to the wall, they can't backdash demo man. I can do it again, do it again, right? The the you're, hopefully you're trying to see where all the points are connecting, right? If the opponent's back is to the wall, their their most rewarding option as a defender, right, would be a tech roll. But you can be aware of that and then simply just follow them, right? Oh, right, that spikes. Um, and then follow them and then boom, you're still in their face, right? Or if they like doing get-up kicks a lot, right? So let's do... Not set. Wake up, low kick. You have a read when they like to do wake up, low kick, right? Whoop. Okay, cool. You counter hit them out of it, or you know, you can do easier or something like, and then just launch them again. But in the open ground, sometimes you don't have the luxury of, you know, they're not going to be in your face doing this, right? After a combo. Paul typically has to run up, so he has to run up, and then at this range, all of a sudden, do four run plus two here, right? Two, two. Oh. But you get the idea, right? Is you got to close some distance in the open ground. At the wall, all of this changes, right? So let's go whoop, to the wall. Mm. God, I love that combo. All right, the opponent pressed the get up kick that they always do, and then they ate 72 ish damage, maybe some more because of the unskilled death fist for it right this is where this is where paul just becomes a monster right it's harder to backdash demo man getting up immediately just gets you wall splat into wall combo into this into this into another one right if i was better <laughs> but you start to see the pieces form right you start to see oh if i just do this or i do a bunch of other stuff boop it, it, it all starts looping together and now the opponent's just terrified and now they're just like man I, I don't want to press anything so they'll just stay on the ground right so now they just go I'm just gonna stay on the ground because this sucks which it does you just go okay cool uh, just keep hitting them just keep hitting them keep hitting them if you do this and the opponent doesn't know how to get out of it and the wall positions in your favor right you can just look at look, look at this this is nearly infinite, right? Boop. 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 Look at... Boop. Boop. Like, you can do this forever, right? And then when they get up, right? Just do this. This. Boop. They stay on the ground. They stay on the ground. And whenever they get up, boop. <laughs> Man, I spent a lot of time making a very obvious point, but you get the idea, right? And then in addition to that, at the wall, right? This is where Paul's sidestep mix-ups come in because at the wall, you have the option of doing this wall combo, which leaves you in a pretty okay position for Oki. The opponent, maybe they'll stay on the ground. Maybe they'll do a get-up kick. And you time it properly. And as they do their get-up kick, you hit them with sidestep three, counter hit, giving you the free plus 12 into the wall splat, into the re-splat, into the combo into let's do it again sidestep boom if they stayed on the ground you hit grounded if they got up and tried to press something you maybe counter hit them or maybe you just they got up standing and you hit them it's okay now you're plus four right now you're plus four do down forward one mix ups course will go back four all of the pieces coming together to form this like incredible overwhelming pressure of offense at the wall 
and all of it just looking really shitty for the defender and really great for the attacker when the attacker is Paul. Uh, that brief overview kind of skimmed over some things, so I honestly, this video is already probably too long, but you know, I wanted to give just a quick introduction into the various concepts and show you some examples of the scary things Paul can do. Right? What 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 do you want to do as a player is going to be up to you, right? I am more than okay with pressing a minus twelve low from sidestep, even if it's slow. This is unseeable, right? And then from sidestep, mixing it up with forward one plus two, which leaves my opponent in a very rough position, right? But let's say forward one plus two is kind of slow, right? So let's say, let's do wake up, low kick. I miss up the timing on the forward one plus two and now I get hit out of it. Thankfully, I, I, you know, I don't get counter hit launched that much, right? Um, but these days, let's say these days we have the technology. Boop, 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 boop. Bah! Love this move, right? Down forward four, baby. That's where it's at. I could just press this move all day, right? So if you wanted a faster option, but still leaves you in a very decent ish position on block, right? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, this time it. See, it's very fast. It's so it's crazy that they gave him this. Oh, you got wall splat. Oh, that's crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do it again. Right. You you can see how easy it is that if the opponent tries to challenge your offense, they can very well likely die. And if they don't challenge your offense, you just start hitting them with your ground hitting moves. Pretty simple. As for the actual mix-up you want to apply, I am more than okay with applying Demo Man at the wall, right? Well, more than okay. I'm fine because, you know, they wake up into it, press it again, whoops. They counter hit, do it again, do, do. Oh my god, I'm so bad. <laughs> Do it again, run up, do it again. Oh, we traded, oh, do it again. Run up, do it again, right? It's If the opponent is just so flustered and attacking, super easy to just start racking up 80, 120 damage off of them, right? Wall combo, what's it gonna be? You know, like just, just look at, imagine the opponent, right? They're just going, boop, boop. Mm. I was not bad. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, that also flips somewhere. That's really funny. Huh. Oh, this move's also great on Oki. Fucking. Oop. Effect 2. Uh, oh my god, the side wall spot change for this move is insane. <laughs> look at that, look at that. In Tekken, in Tekken 8, or Tekken 8, wait, this is Tekken 8. In Tekken 7, this move would be. Dog water. The side wall splat would look at look at how they they just peel off. Look at the angle. Look at this angle. All right. Psych. Oh yeah. Surprise. This is all about me huffing copium on up back two. <laughs> but this move on Oki is really good, and especially at the wall. This wall position still get a wall splat. Oh, they're 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 like not in next to me at the wall. All right. Side step. Boom. And look at that. Still, if I was better, still get a combo. All right. All right. I could I could talk about Paul at the wall all day. He's a monster. He's a menace. Right. Figure out what are your options are. The simplest option is just demo man is your high risk, high reward option. Yeah, it doesn't do like a lot of damage, and sometimes the hits are really weird because it's an advancing knock three hit knockdown string. But the the the, the reward is just how crazy it is for the opponent. This is, Demo Man's a 15 frame low. Look at that, look at that. Look at them trying to attack and I just go whoop. Uh, whoop, whoop, right? It, it's, it's actually insane, this move's insane. But, you know, and then, oh, they wanna get up and block low. Boom, you have 90, 90% 90 of your mids wall splat, right? It's the synergies are there, the pressure is insane. 
However, this is death on block, right? Block all. Oh, whoops. So that's where side step three comes in. Back four, back four at the wall is pretty good because you can use this like a, uh, you can use this. Um, you you can use this special stun a lot more, right? Boom! His throws wall splat because why not? Seventy damage off a throw—that's crazy, right? All of these options flow together. You as a player have to figure out what is the risk reward you are willing to take, right? How much risk do you want to take? How much reward do you want to take? It's, it's the power is in your hands. Uh, I think. Oh, okay. It's actually technically there is one last option I want to talk about. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, open ground. I should have talked about this earlier, but it is what it is. Let's revisit it. Do a combo. Do a barrel roll. You run up to the opponent, all of a sudden your offense gets stuffed, right? This is where the punishment part of Paul comes in. Boop, boop. Run up, boom! A simple pause and trying to gauge when your opponent is gonna go for these get up kicks can lead to a huge amount of reward, right? Is that sidewalk right? Oh, sidewalk right. Boop, boop, boop. Easy, easy, right? So in the open ground, you know, focus, if you see someone who likes to get up kick a lot, try to threaten the offense by running forward and then immediately, you know, hang back. Gauge the timing, get used to the timing. Timing is a core skill for Paul, right? You, the better you get at timing your offense and timing your attacks to manage and manage to disrupt your opponent's timing, the rewards you can start cashing out, right? All the time. But pretty simple idea. If they like get up kips a lot, just just with punish them. Oh my god, I've been talking forever and I'm losing my mind. The key takeaways, right? I went through all these options and obviously there's a lot of options to go around. Just don't 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 get overwhelmed by the options. I just want you to be aware of them, right? What you need to focus on are the common ones. Why did I stress about these get-up kicks so much? Because everybody does them, right? Everybody in their mind, I do them, right? Even even now when they don't counter hit launch, it's so easy as just a free like get off me tool to disrupt an opponent's offense. So you don't need to worry about them doing tech roll, ukemi, side roll, get up, recovery, whatever, if they don't show that, right? 90% of the players at these early stages that you're fighting, if you're somehow an advanced intermediate pro level player watching this, why? <laughs> uh, right, 90% of the players you're fighting, they'll do get up kicks, right? And then you want to just go, okay, there's 90 options on defense in this game. They're doing this one. How do I answer that one? Right. It's good to have plans. It's good to have an answer for every situation. Like, oh, if they use Kemi, this is my option. It's really just more about probability, right? Tekken is a numbers game, right? It's not about what the options are. It's what is the opponent you are fighting a across the screen. Like, look at the screen, look at the opponent you're fighting. What is the probability that they'll do insert option here, right? That is what your focus should be. And once you figure out what are the common strategies that you're gonna be seeing a lot, hint, hint, it's a lot of get up kicks and maybe some like, some tech rolls occasionally, right? plan your offense around that, right? And then as you fight stronger opponents that maybe have a good bit more variety, then you can start planning your offense in other ways. You're playing Paul, right? Get him to the wall. I, I don't, it doesn't matter. So if I, if I spend heat, if I spend my heat bar and now look at how much closer I am to the wall and now they have to guess again and heat death just carries them to the wall again. Get him to the wall. I spent 20, 30, 20 hours rambling about all these crazy options Paul has at the wall, right? Cannot stress enough how nice the wall is for Paul. That's my opinion as a Paul player, right? If you do not play Paul and you somehow stumbled across this video and got to this point, figure out what your character does and 
thank you for staying for all this time for a video that's not it's not about any character besides the most simple character in the roster right be flexible remember you you it's an ever-evolving game you're not fighting an opponent and you're not fighting some computer that's like on a set routine you're fighting a human player that will be changing up their options a lot ideally right and you want to be cognizant of that and be ready so sometimes you have to be ready for the get up kick and then whiff punish and sometimes you want to hop kick because you know they're going to do get up low and low crush right boop 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 Boop, 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 look at this wall carry, boop, 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 <laughs> all right, the, 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 you, you know, you, you have a lot, you have a lot of options, and finally, it's just find a risk reward you're comfortable with, I will talk shit about demo man a lot, right, it's the fucking high risk, medium reward, low, but I will still use it because even with even with in this game with the stupid recoverable health, right? I still find value in this unseeable low option that beats that is faster than all of my opponent's options and keeps my opponent at the wall and the speed to let me sidestep and then immediately do this little I'm just gonna set it up. But you get the idea, right? Is that you figure out what the opponent likes to do on their defense and then run up and adjust it. Or you don't. You're like, I will never use Demo Man, which is a fair route for Paul, right? Outside of combos, some people just will never use this move. That's why you have sidestep three. That's why you have course forward three. You have all these options available to you. Find the ones you're comfortable with, experiment, and try to find like a good layer one, layer two offense, right? Anyway, I hope that maybe enlightened some ideas, gave you some ideas on how to play Paul, figure out Paul, do Oki stuff or whatever else, right? If you have questions, feel free to ask either here or in the Discord. Anyway, have a good one.